Hey guys, I found a graphics card. This is the listing, so let's have a look at the photos in more detail. This one is for HEP. We can see the notch here is in the front, so this is one of the older video cards. And we can see, zooming in, it's from Asus, and the model number is HEP V3400 TNT. Here's the card from the back. I can see there are a few marks and scuffs, but otherwise it looks in pretty decent condition. Here we can see the ports at the back of the card. We've got VGA, but also inputs and outputs seems to be S-Video and Composite. And this is very nice to see the seller has actually bothered to hook up the video card, test it. There is a bias screen, so I'm gonna buy this video card. While the card is in the mail, let's find out some more information. This is Tech Power Up and it has some information and indeed it is the NVIDIA River TNT graphics chip. This one played a very important role in video card history. Here we have an advertisement from 1998 by Elsa and their Eraser 2 video card with the NVIDIA River TNT. We have a benchmark here in Quake 2 and look at that, it's roughly twice as fast as the previous Reva 128 and Matrox Millennium. However, the famous 3DFX Voodoo 2 is missing in this benchmark. Here we have another ad, TNT mind-blowing 128-bit. And here Nvidia is going into more technical detail. They're basically highlighting all the weaknesses of the Voodoo 2. 32-bit colors, 16 megabytes of VRAM, supporting up to 1600 by 1200 resolution and also being able to accelerate to the graphics. The car just arrived and the very first thing I do is testing it because it might have to go back to the seller if it doesn't work. So here it is on a Pentium 3 test bench. Well, the fan is spinning, it's looking good. Let's wait for the post beep. Here it is and we can see a picture on the monitor, beautiful. I listened to the noise of the fan and well, it definitely needs some maintenance. There's a lot of rattling and loud noise coming out of this one. I found some historic benchmarks from Tom's hardware on a Pentium 2 400. The Riva TNT, well indeed in Quake 2 it compares favorably against the 3 d Effects Voodoo 2. With an AMD K6 processor however, the Voodoo 2 was much faster. The NVIDIA Reaver TNT really needs a good processor to get going. Let's give this video card some fill TLC. Here I'm just using a soft brush and I'm carefully removing any dust or loose dirt. First from the back of the card, then cleaning the I.O. shield a little bit. And then of course the front of the card, trying to get into all the little nooks and crannies. Here I'm removing the cooler. I'm using a pen. It's a little trick to deal with these annoying push pins. Yeah, very straightforward. It comes out without any effort. We can see there's a lot of thermal paste, quite dry. It's been sitting there for a very long time, I guess, but who knows? Maybe someone did reapply the thermal paste. I'm using some IPA to clean up that graphics core. It took me a few rounds, but in the end, yeah, it came out really nicely. And here we have the core in all its glory, NVIDIA Riva TNT. And now let's take a closer look at the card. Asus HEP3400 TNT with 16 megabytes of SG RAM, revision 1.00. We have eight memory modules for this video card. I wrote down the model number. Let's see if we can find a data sheet. Here we go, I found a PDF that has all the information in terms of speed. Well, the memory module has eight nanoseconds and it should be able to handle up to 125 megahertz. Let's find out the clock speeds. I'm using the Everest utility. We can see the core is running at 90 megahertz and the RAM is running at 110 megahertz. And also the memory is connected with a 128 bit interface. I can see two jumpers on the card. This one here is pretty straightforward. It sets the TV mode between PAL and NTSC. The other jumper here, a little bit higher, it's labeled DDC, but I have no idea what it's doing. So let's have a look in the user manual. D 
The user manual was easy to find directly from the ASUS website. And the first thing I'm noticing is there are a lot of different versions of this video card. Here we go, this is the layout of the 16 megabyte version which I have and look at that. There are two versions, one with SD RAM and one with SG RAM, which is the one we have. Now about that jumper, well, it's also not mentioned in the user manual, just J1, which is the one we already know for toggling between PAL and NTSC. There are two connectors. One is a 26 pin VESA connector. The other one labeled VIPB is some sort of a proprietary video input. Again, I wasn't able to find more information on this one. There are two interesting chips. One is from Philips and the other one is from Crontel. I found some data sheets. The chip from Philips is an enhanced video input processor. And the second one from Crontel is a digital PC to TV encoder. The ports of this video card are interesting, especially being able to capture not only composite, but especially S video. I think some of you might find this feature really interesting. I want to find out the size of the cooler so I can buy a replacement. Looks like this is a 40 millimeter fan. And the distance of the mounting holes, well, it's around 59 to 60 millimeters, something around that range. So I bought some replacement coolers. Here's the first one with a sort of copper color looking cooler and a 40 millimeter fan. And this is the other model. This one is black, but I can see the fan is actually quite a bit smaller. So I'm gonna go with the larger, more substantial cooler for this project. Let's apply some generous thermal paste for this one. And here comes the cooler. I'm lining it up carefully and then you have to squeeze quite hard to push these push pins through to the other side. Make sure they are engaging and then everything locks in securely. So this was indeed a 59 millimeter distance between the mounting holes. Unfortunately, the cable for the fan, well, the plug is way too big. It turns out the video card has a JST 1.25 connector. So I'm just gonna plug it into one of the spare fan headers on the motherboard. And now let's see what the difference is. I'm firing up the card and then we can already hear it's much quieter. The noise is a lot better. I'm gonna hold the microphone close to the cooler to hear the difference. The recording is a little bit misleading because it picks up a lot of like wind noise, but I can tell you it is much quieter than it was before. And likely also the card will run much cooler. We are having a look at the test system before we continue. It's an A open slot one motherboard with the Intel 440BX chipset. High performance Pentium 3 processors for slot one are really expensive and hard to find. So I'm using a slot one adapter and a socket 370 copper mine Pentium 3 running at 900 megahertz. I'm using 256 megabyte of SD RAM with CL2 timings. For storage today, we're going with an SD card. It's a 32 gigabyte SD memory card with an SD card to ID adapter. Storage performance is pretty decent. Make sure DMA mode is activated. Here are the results of the ATTO disk benchmark. We have an IDE optical disk drive, especially for installing Windows. This one is important. And for input, I'm using a PS2 mouse and keyboard. And as always, if you're doing benchmarking, you should use a sound card. We're using the Sound Blaster ODG2 ZS. This video is brought to you by PCBWay, our long-term channel sponsor. It is your one-stop shop for printed circuit boards manufacturing, assembly, 3D printing, and CNC machining. To order a PCB, click on the instant quote button, upload your Gerber file, check the preview of the board, and then customize the PCB specifications. Check the link in the video description for more information. There are many drivers that we can use. I really wanted to use the ASUS branded driver version 0631 from September of the year 2000. It has all the options, including VSync toggle for direct 3D and OpenGL, but unfortunately we're getting flickering without VSync enabled. Now I've seen this before, so we're going with much older drivers. 
These are the NVIDIA Reference Drivers version 0203. VSync toggle is not present in the drivers, so I'm using Reva Tuner. And now we are off to some benchmarks. First up, we have 3 Mark 99 Max with a score of 4736. In GL Quake, we can see solid performance. I've got results for various resolutions as well as 16-bit and 32-bit colors. Quake 2 runs a little bit slower, but at 640x480, we're still getting excellent performance. Forsaken was a game that was heavily benchmarked back in the day. Very colorful and a real showcase for 32-bit colors. And on the Riva TNT, it runs really well. Incoming was another showcase for 32-bit colors. Very colorful, looks stunning, and performance is also pretty good. I would say up to 800 by 600, this is really playable. Here we have Tarok 2, also decent performance, playable up to 800 by 600 with 16-bit colors. And one more game, this one is expendable. This one is more demanding, you're better off playing with 16-bit colors and keeping the resolution low. So how does the Riva TNT compare against the Voodoo 2 with a faster Pentium 3 900 megahertz? Well, we can see it here. In the benchmarks I conducted with the mini GL driver in GL Quake, the Voodoo 2, the single card, is a little bit faster. It can't do 1024 by 768, but then we can see Voodoo 2 SLI being significantly faster. We can see a similar picture in Quake 2. This one also has a mini GL driver for the Voodoo cards. A single Voodoo card is faster than the Riva TNT and Voodoo 2 SLI is a lot faster. Here we have Forsaken. Now this runs on the Glide API. So this is an advantage of the Voodoo cards. The Voodoo 2 and the TNT, very similar performance. And again, the Voodoo 2 SLI significantly faster. Incoming is a game that only supports direct 3D, so no Glide API. Still, the TNT and the Voodoo 2 perform very similar, but again, the Voodoo 2 SLI is just in a different league. Table Fog is supported. Here we have Insane. This is a good test. We can see fog in the distance. I also wanted to test in Thief 2, but this game crashes when you launch it. But look, this game is quite known to be picky with the NVIDIA driver version, so I'm pretty sure there is one driver version out there that will work with this game. Palette textures are not supported. Here we have some proof in Final Fantasy VII and Final Fantasy VIII, but this is really not a big deal. There are only a handful of games that are impacted in a meaningful way. I had a quick look at some of the Asus software for the TV in and out functions, Asus Live and Asus Digital VCR, but wasn't able to test anything because at the moment I have nothing with S-Video or Composite at hand. And now we get to the fun part of showcasing some retro games. Today's game is Power Slide. So with my videos, sometimes I test a bunch of games to see how they run and how they perform. But in other videos, I like to sit down, pick a game, play it for a little bit longer, find out about the background, study the controls and the user manual and just play it with a little bit more focus. Power Slide is a racing game developed by Ratback Games, an Australian developer and released in 1998. And you can see it right away. It's got that Mad Max vibe with dusty tracks in the middle of nowhere. As with most of my games that are showcased in the video, this is another game I bought on GOG and then tried to get it to run on this retro PC. It ships with NGlide, so you have to remove all those NGlide files, but I had some real trouble getting the music going. Apparently the music is really good. So the short version is I installed the last official patch, version 1.4, to get a clean executable, and then I mounted the game CD, which I got from the archive website into Daemon Tools to get the music working. The game supports the Glide and Direct 3D API. So on the Reva TNT, we're using Direct 3D. I'm running at 640 by 480. And there's also an option for EAX and 3D audio. The game runs silky smooth with a locked frame rate of 60 FPS. 
really good looking game looks very polished there are some game options that you might want to check out like the rear view mirror is disabled by default and you can also increase the opponents to 11 cars as always i play on the easy difficulty and the first two tracks are really easy sand blaster and speedway but then the difficulty quickly ramps up i really struggled straight away with the third track it's called the damn track and yeah i ended up being last so this is one tricky game even on easy mode i have some more footage of other tracks we have devil's elbow and mineshafted so this is another game that falls into the category easy to learn hard to master the controls are very simple apart from steering and handbrake there's really not much else uh, that you need to worry about the music is indeed very interesting it's got some aussie vibes going and also this game has a built-in time demo benchmark so i guess i will add this to my portfolio of benchmarks and you will see it being featured in more videos going forward one of the australian developers left a comment on the gog forum which is really awesome to see and he writes how the team was very young and this was the very first game there was a planned sequel but they never managed to find a publisher and then the company unfortunately folded so thumbs up for power slide it's a racing game i love racing games there are not too many retro racing games out there especially available on a digital format this one is hard but it is still worth checking out so guys the nvidia reva tnt is a really important graphics chip in the history of pc gaming between nvidia and 3dfx well people can be very passionate and it is always an interesting topic to discuss so here is my take what i'm seeing is there's a big difference in what processor you're using with the reaver tnt and i think this is why there are a lot of passionate debates out there claiming back in the day the reaver tnt was so much better but others insisting really passionately that the voodoo card was just so much better on their computer especially voodoo 2 and sli needs a very fast processor and it's on the level of a voodoo 3 2000 which came out much later and this is why 3 dfx voodoo 2 users are so passionate if you invested in that platform back in the day you had a few years of worry-free gaming without having to upgrade on the flip side with the reva tnt you got a single card you didn't need to buy two video cards you also got access to higher resolutions and you could enjoy 32-bit colors with nvidia the drivers do matter a lot more than with other cards for example with 3 dfx or ati you can usually just use the latest driver version but that is not the case with nvidia and you saw in this video that some of the newer drivers have some flickering going on with vsync disabled finding a reaver tnt is also going to be a little bit challenging prices will definitely be on the high side maybe not as much as a voodoo 2 but definitely not a bargain purchase if you want a cheaper alternative look for the reaver tnt2 m64 it basically performs at exactly the same level but you should be able to pick up one for much cheaper because it's considered a value budget video card so guys there you have it that is my take on the reaver tnt and how it compares to the voodoo 2 as i said it, this is a very passionate topic i can't wait to read your comments on saturday morning with a cup of coffee it's one of my highlights in the week and with that i want to thank you for watching my videos supporting me through the channel what i do for many many years and i hope we can continue doing this fun hobby and that's it for me thank you so much for watching and i shall see you soon with another one